Welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sebo-Voss. Our goal is to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage and encourage you to do it too. We'll touch on food, travel, history, music, and language, and share stories from our listeners. We're glad you're here. This is a podcast where we'll encourage you to dig deeper to learn about your Hungarian heritage in a variety of ways. We'll have thought-provoking conversations and share resources. So whether you know a little or a lot about being Hungarian, this is the place to be. Welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Liz Sabovas, and if you're new to the podcast, welcome. I'm glad you found us. Today we are going to talk about how to add a Hungarian touch to a wedding. Weddings are wonderful, life-changing events. The blending of two people who are connected to two families of different ethnic origins is a delicate endeavor. How is balance achieved? When I became engaged to my husband, Don, who is half Dutch and half German, there might have been a twinge of disappointment that I was planning to dilute the Hungarian blood in our family, but my mom never let on. In fact, she and Don enjoyed a great relationship, and it started early on by my mom going the extra mile as we planned our wedding. Our wedding was pretty simple, but nice. We had a brief reception at the church with cake, punch, and pastries. As a way to represent the combination of our ethnic backgrounds, my mom baked a lot of nut and poppy kalach to serve and also encouraged us to secure Dutch letters from the bakery in Pella, Iowa for the Dutch touch. I honestly do not recall what we did for the German emphasis, but I'm sure there was something. So having Hungarian pastries on the dessert table was a subtle way to sneak in the Hungarian touch. Not every wedding involving someone with Hungarian heritage will reflect something about Hungarian culture, but there are options out there in case people are interested. Sometimes the proposal happens in Hungary, or people go to Hungary to be married. Others reenact Hungarian culture and customs by being married in the U.S., but dress in authentic Hungarian wedding clothes. Others, like my mom, chose to cook something for the buffet line or the dessert table. Maybe the ring bearer will carry a pillow made in Hungary, or maybe the honeymoon will involve a trip to Hungary. When our son Landon married his bride Grace in 2014, there were several Hungarian elements. A rehearsal dinner featuring Hungarian food, chicken paprikash, cucumber salad, cabbage and noodles, and rucka krumpli. A palinka toast at the rehearsal dinner. Both walnut and poppy seed kalach were served at the reception. Several richly decorated mezesh kalach were used as decorations. Mezesh kalach is uh, Hungarian gingerbread. Salon Sukor, the Hungarian Christmas candy, was available for the guests to sample. And the wedding cake had a Hungarian floral theme made from fondant. Also, as an extra special thing that we didn't plan on, but was a little sweet surprise, was that the bride's father welcomed Landon to the family in Hungarian. When Lauren married Josh in 2015, there were also several Hungarian touches. We had a salon dish or bacon fry in the days leading up to the wedding with the wedding party. We shared palinka. We served homemade walnut kalach at the reception. We served double torta, And Lauren wrapped her bouquet with a cloth napkin embroidered in Hungary. While it is important to carry on Hungarian connections and traditions, the most important thing is to allow each couple to make their own decisions about how it will look for them. Experience and exposure go a long way in helping people connect to their Hungarian roots, but it looks different in every family, as well as changes depending on where they are in each stage of life. Don't be dismayed if there wasn't the Hungarian touch you were hoping for in a wedding in your family. Sometimes these types of things grow in importance as time marches on. Remember, there is a lifetime to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage. But here are some suggestions. If you are serving wine at your reception, include one or more Hungarian wines. Have available raspberry syrup and soda water as a special treat for the children or those who don't drink alcohol. Share Hungarian-themed gifts with the wedding party. Teach the wedding party how to say Egeshigede, the informal version of to your health for the wedding toast. It is best to teach and practice this before too many glasses of champagne. Have mezesh kalach, the Hungarian-style gingerbread cookie, with the names of the bride and groom and wedding date on it as a reception favor. 
serve Hungarian pastries, or have a traditional cake decorated with the Hungarian folk art theme. We recently asked a local baker who isn't Hungarian to decorate a cake like this, and it was beautiful. Serve Hungarian food for the meal, like stuffed cabbage, chicken paprikash, or Hungarian-style salami and cherkes kobas for the appetizer table. Incorporate Hungarian music during the ceremony or at the reception. Use Hungarian embroidery or Hungarian Christmas ornaments for decoration. Consider hosting an old-fashioned selenoshutes or bacon fry for the wedding party or for an informal get-together to celebrate the engagement or introduce the families. Now it's your turn. Let us know how you added a Hungarian touch to your wedding or share additional suggestions. If you have an idea about adding a Hungarian touch to a wedding, we would love to hear it. Send an email to podcast at hungarianliving.com. Thanks for listening, and be sure to let others know about the Hungarian Living Podcast. Hungarian Living is a division of Mudyar Marketing, the Hungarian store, where you can find meaningful gifts with Hungarian style. Check us out at mudyarmarketing.com. And special thanks to Stephen Chichek and the Animal Cannibals for the show music. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Hungarian Living, please subscribe and share this podcast with your favorite Hungarian. Check out our show notes for links to resources mentioned in this episode. If you have a question or comment, email us at podcast at hungarianliving.com. We'll catch you next time.